North Korea's troops in Russia are largely thought to be from Pyongyang's elite Storm Corps, but one ex-member of the branch said he thought North Korea did send special forces, but not its best, according to Business Insider. As questions arise over the quality of Kim Jong-un's troops in Russia, a former soldier who served in North Korea's special forces said they're likely the country's elite troops. Lee Woong-gil, who defected to South Korea in 2007, told the Korea Times, which is headquartered in the South Korean capital of Seoul, that he believed the North Korean men cited in Russia were indeed special forces. They do not appear to be the finest members, however, he told the outlet. Kang Chol hwan a North Korean defector and journalist, cited accounts from informants in the North asserting that the North Korean soldiers sent to Russia do not match the media's portrayal of them as elite army members. He claimed that the troop deployment to Russia is merely part of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un's ruthless business strategy aimed at profiting from the war, emphasizing that Kim is primarily focused on how much money he can generate. North Korean troops sent to Russia are not elite army members, Kang said. Kim Jong-un would benefit more from dispatching inexperienced soldiers to the front lines as they will likely become cannon fodder. The more North Koreans die on the battlefield, the more money he stands to gain from Russia. The war in Ukraine has turned into a lucrative business opportunity for Kim Jong-un since North Korea and Russia signed a military pact that began with arms and artillery supplies and later expanded to troop deployments. The North Korean regime is infamous for its exploitative remittance policies. Washington and Kyiv, Ukraine's capital, say they believe that about 11,000 North Korean troops have been sent to Russia to aid in the Ukraine war, including some 8,000 dispatched to the Kursk region. There's been debate over how well these troops measure up to modern standards for special forces or whether the North Korean men in Russia are even from the country's prestigious unit. South Korea's defense ministry estimates that the Storm Corps has 200,000 members, a staggering total for a special forces branch. During a September visit to a training base, Kim lauded the division's members as each being worth 100 typical North Korean soldiers. But Seoul has described these troops in Russia as young, inexperienced men sent to be mere cannon fodder. The Telegram channel Gostri Kartuzi published a video showing the liquidation of a North Korean soldier in the near rear zone of Russian troops at a distance of about 5 kilometers from the front near Selidovo. Experts, having analyzed the face of the deceased in detail, determined that he was a representative of Korean nationality. Military expert Alexander Kovalenko explained that the physiognomic features of North Koreans formed against the background of chronic malnutrition and vitamin deficiency indicate that the liquidated fighter came from North Korea. The video also shows that the deceased was carrying a large load, the volume of which is comparable to his build. This suggests that the Russians may be using North Koreans as labor to transport ammunition and provisions to the front lines. As Kovalenko notes, such a practice is common among Russian troops since the use of equipment in the frontline zone is difficult due to the systematic destruction of vehicles by Ukrainian drones. Thus, the delivery of goods is carried out by foot porters who carry supplies on their backs. The expert added that the use of North Koreans as labor in the war zone raises questions and suggested waiting for official confirmation before drawing final conclusions. Putin's forces are believed to be losing hundreds of troops a day, with Ukrainian estimates going as high as 1,200 to 1,500, so the more than 10,000 troops South Korea believes are in Russia. In the big picture, even 12,000 soldiers don't affect the general situation of the war significantly, says Emil Kastelmi, who runs the Blackbird Group, which tracks the war in Ukraine. The troops are already under fire, being shelled in the Russian border region of Kursk, according to Kyiv. This is the area where Ukrainian troops have held territory, having started a daring raid in August. Questions have been raised about the caliber of the North Korean troops, not least because none of the group, which includes 500 officers and three generals, have any combat experience. North Korea's isolation on the international stage means that its troops, which number more than a million, have faced nothing but training. None would think they are going to Russia to die.
Choi Jung-hoon, a former first lieutenant in North Korea's army, told the Associated Press, but I think they're cannon fodder because they will be sent to the most dangerous sites and will surely be killed. The New York Times has reported that 50,000 Russian and North Korean soldiers are preparing to launch a large-scale counter-offensive in Russia's Kursk Oblast. According to U.S. officials, Russian troops are carrying out missile strikes on Ukrainian positions in Kursk Oblast and deploying artillery against them, but they have not yet launched a large-scale offensive. Ukrainian officials said they expect a large-scale attack involving North Korean troops in the coming days. North Korean troops are currently training with Russian forces in the west of Kursk Oblast. The New York Times reported that some U.S. military and intelligence officials have become more pessimistic about Ukraine's overall prospects, noting that Russia is steadily gaining ground in both Kursk Oblast and eastern Ukraine. Officials say these setbacks are partly the result of Ukraine's failure to address the critical issue of a shortage of troops. One Western official said that Ukraine's surprise invasion of Kursk Oblast in August had weakened its forces across the battlefield in Ukraine's east, leaving Ukrainian troops vulnerable to a Russian offensive. But the official, as well as several other U.S. officials, said Ukraine still has strong defenses in Kursk Oblast and may be able to retain control over the area they currently hold, at least for a while. Western and Ukrainian officials said that the arrival of North Korean troops was a serious escalation after more than two years of war. According to U.S. officials, North Korea has sent more than 10,000 soldiers to fight alongside Russian forces in Kursk Oblast. These troops are wearing Russian uniforms and have been equipped by Moscow, but are likely to be fighting in their own separate units. Ukrainian officials said that Moscow had supplied North Korean troops with machine guns, sniper rifles, anti-tank missiles, and rocket-propelled grenade launchers. According to U.S. officials, Russia has trained the North Koreans in artillery fire, basic infantry tactics, and most importantly, trench clearing. This indicates that at least some of the North Korean forces will be engaged in frontal attacks on Ukrainian forces' dug-in defenses. A Ukrainian official said that North Korean troops were divided into two groups, an assault group and a support group, which would help secure the territory recaptured from Ukrainian forces. Meanwhile, U.S. officials believe that Ukrainian troops will be difficult to dislodge and that Russian and North Korean forces are likely to suffer heavy losses similar to those Russia has suffered in Ukraine's east. U.S. and British military analysts estimate the current number of Russian troops killed and wounded at an average of more than 1,200 per day. The North Koreans will fight as light infantry without the use of armored vehicles, and the current Ukrainian tactics of artillery shelling and drone attacks have proven devastating for unprotected Russian troops, the New York Times reported. Nevertheless, if Russia gains momentum, it may not stop at its border but try to push Ukrainian troops even farther. According to representatives of the U.S. Department of Defense, it is unclear whether the North Korean government will authorize its troops to conduct long-term operations in Ukraine or whether they are intended only for a counter-offensive in Kursk Oblast. Some U.S. officials believe that North Korea may order its troops to stop at the border while Russian forces advance deeper into Ukraine. U.S. defense officials also said they did not know whether North Korea would send additional reinforcements. According to a senior Ukrainian official, Ukrainian intelligence predicted that North Korea could send up to 100,000 troops.